Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we had key support at 55 quarter and uh, ES held above that zone, consolidated and then broke out to the upside and tested the 68 to 71 resistance where responsive sellers were active so far. And uh, then on the 7.30 a.m. Central Econ release, we saw a downward reaction. But overall, uh, you know, holding above the 59 quarter to 61 quarter would leave buyers in control. And uh, we could just consolidate, retest 68 to 71, and then eventually perhaps even break out above 68 to 71. So heading into the open, uh, you know, we're going to keep a close eye on 59 quarter to 61 quarter. And ideally, if this market is truly strong and setting up for a breakout, then we should not really get much of a pullback. And if we start seeing some more selling pressure, then, you know, that would be a reason for concern. And uh, it could be an early warning sign that the short term control is starting to shift to the sell side. So off the open, you know, we are going to have to be flexible and um, understand that, you know, we've tested some pretty decent resistance in the overnight session. As long as we're holding some of these support zones, you know, there's still a chance for buyers to maintain control. But, uh, you know, we do want to be open to the idea that the market could be setting up for a move lower. And um, given that, you know, the next major catalyst is the FOMC announcement due tomorrow, we may not really get much of a directional break to the upside, especially uh, today. So on the downside, 59 quarter to 61 quarter is uh, short term support at this point, And 55 to 56, we're going to be using as the micro bull bear zone. So you know, if we break below 59 quarter, 61 quarter, and then break 55 to 56, you know, those would be early indications that, uh, you know, we're starting to see some weakness come into this market, and we could be setting up for a bigger pullback. Uh, below 55, we have the overall uh, bigger picture bull bear zone at 48 quarter to 50 quarter. So that's the next inflection point. And, uh, you know, first test, buyers can certainly defend that area. But if that area breaks as well, uh, you know, then at that point, we could see a bigger picture shift, at least, uh, you know, on uh, on some of the larger time frames to the sell side and setting up for a move down to yesterday's lows and uh, potentially 38 to 40, which would be the next inflection point. But, you know, the market moves step by step and, uh, you know, we are going to have to take it one step at a time. So as long as we're holding above, you know, this uh, 59 quarter to 61 quarter, we just have to realize that, you know, we could just consolidate and then slowly build value higher and head up back to 68.71. And again, there is that potential for a upside break. So that's something we're going to have to gauge off the open. You know, if we are going to get an upside break, then we should be seeing some really strong internals and, uh, you know, some, some pretty decent momentum on the upside with the tick printing higher values on the upside and not really printing a lot of lower values, right? So, so far, we've seen a rejection at 68 to 71. We're coming down into support. Market's very balanced in the overnight session. It could really tip either way. Um, FOMC announcement tomorrow is a major catalyst. So with that understanding, you know, it seems unlikely that we're going to see a big break one way or the other. Uh, but considering that 68 to 71 is decent resistance, you know, we could be setting up for a uh, pullback to 55, 56, 59 quarter, 61 quarter. But we are going to have to take it step by step in this market because, uh, you know, overall the market is very balanced. And, uh, you know, we've seen some pretty strong buying over the last week or so. And when you're dealing with a market that's, you know, at these elevated prices and near resistance, you know, it just requires you to be very nimble with your entries and uh, your bias because intraday, you know, the bias can shift back and forth because, uh, you know, larger time frames, buyers have been strong, but now we're also at, you know, pretty key resistance. So that can set up a lot of two-sided movement. And, uh, you know, we've seen that over the last few days where even though we're slowly heading higher, we're also getting some pretty decent reactions at uh, pretty much every resistance zone along the way. So, uh, you know, today it's really going to be about watching and seeing whether the strength we saw in the overnight session can really continue after the open. And if it can, then, you know, we can, of course, go back up 
to 68.71 and uh, you know that zone's been tested multiple times now so there is potential for it to break but we would have to see some pretty strong uh, internals you know broad market strength in order for that scenario to play out and if there's even a lack of strength you know that could be enough to uh, you know cap the upside around 68 to 71 but if there is broad market strength advanced decline is strong momentum is strong uh, you know then you want to be careful at that 68 to 71 because we have tested it a few times in the overnight session and then you know balancing at the highs could lead to a breakout and a test of 77 to 79 where sellers can still be active so those are the main thoughts heading into the open you know let's just see if this uh, short-term strength that we've seen in the overnight session can continue based on that we can figure out how aggressive we need to be on the long side if that uh, you know strength completely uh, you know evaporates after the open then there could be some short setups as well 55 to 56 is very key 59 quarter 61 quarter short-term support so let's see how the market reacts to those zones and we'll take it from there